Michigan hockey fans, are you ready to Brave the Wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey. Brave the Wild is available on thesportstuff.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and Double Twist. A pleasure to be back on board once again today. We're going to be talking regular season hockey, but yeah, who's going to be playing for this club? Because, uh, (laughs) yeah, it's getting kind of ridiculous. We're talking one injury after another. And to make matters worse, the Wilds start 1-2. and two. Or should we say 0-2 oh at the beginning there. Luckily, the Wild win against the Chicago Blackhawks, but kind of an expensive win there. I mean, you lose Niederreiter and <laughs> Parisi. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Falingo. I mean, it just never ends. Falingo gets a, a broken bone in his face <clears throat> in a fight. Just a nice little fight there. And then, yeah, gets hit with a haymaker. That's great. And then, of course, Zach Parisi, the ongoing saga with God knows what's going on. Is it his back? No, it's not his back, but he's out, though. And he's out till God knows when. Granlin out as well. He's going to be missing a few more games. And that's kind of week to week, not day to day. A lower body injury. Haven't disclosed that one uh kind of back and forth. You you hear stuff, and then is it even real? You don't even know. Um, we do know for sure that it's a high ankle sprain for Nino Niederreiter. He's out for about three weeks or more. And then Mr. Charlie Coyle's the big one. He uh, hit in the back of the leg on a slap shot from Jared Spurgeon, my favorite defenseman on the wild by a mile, even more than uh, Ryan Suter, yes. Uh, and he's got a broken leg out six to eight weeks. <laughs> Well, all right. So other than then, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? Yeah, you're probably tired of me saying that, but I don't know. I said it anyway because it's true. Yeah, we survived, I guess. No, we really didn't. Uh, Mike Riley made the uh, initial NHL roster. It's more of like transaction talk and <laughs> state of the wild in terms of injuries and call-ups and God knows what's going to happen than even reviewing the games at this point because, well, the wild are one and two. That's nice. You lose one to Detroit. You lose one to... Carolina in incredibly frustrating fashion, but luckily the Wild got a point out of it. We got a point, and then you kind of sort of crushed Chicago, but, well, circumstances kind of led to that uh, in the third period, so the third period, it was one-to-one at the time. The Wild did get a one nothing lead. We'll get to that in a second. I'm going crazy here. Daniel Winnick inked to a one-year deal for $600,060, well, $660,000, one-year ditty for him, a stark contrast to 2.5 mil last year with the Clucks, the Anaheim Clucks, so, uh, yes, um, he's, uh, well, he played with Anaheim in the past, he was with uh, Washington, but uh, a good overall career, solid fourth line, third, fourth, bottom six kind of guy, penalty killing machine, the guy is, you know, there's a reason he's in the NHL, even though he's not like a big time scorer, he's not completely worthless in scoring, he's not Matt Johnson or anything, or, well, I won't say other names, because that's not nice, um, (laughs) Uh, but the guy is on the puck all the time. I mean, the guy is aggressive. His defense is unbelievable. I mean, if the guy could score, he'd be a Selkie contract, uh, a Selkie uh, finalist every year. They, he is a stud defense, uh, defensive forward, man. And I really love what Daniel Daniel Winnick, Dan Winnick, Daniel Winnick brings to the Minnesota Wild. So nice. It's just the salary cap situation even stiffer than ever. But then, okay, we get some leeway now because of the injury. So, yay, we got long-term injuries. So now we got a little more cap flexibility. Ha-ha, long-term injuries. Yay, but it's all to like top six type of guys. <laughs> top six, top 12, whatever you want to say, because people shuffle around. Yeah, all of them. I mean, Parisi, like we said, uh, Granlund, Granlund, Granlund. Isn't that great? Your leading scorer type of guy. Obviously, he was the leading scorer last year, and I think he's still very much capable of being that guy, even maybe even an 80-point guy, but I don't know if he's going to get it now, depending on how many games he's going to miss. Uh, and, of course, yep, it's like Coil broken leg, Mr. Nino Niederreiter with the high ankle sprain, and even Folingo, there's top 12 top, or whatever, even fourth line, but he's he's been top 12 because of the line shuffling. Uh, situation. Poor Daniel Winnick and Cullen kind of left on their own there. They get a rot- rotating uh, <laughs> rotating right winger to join them. It's kind of sad, kind of tr- sad but true type of situation there. Very limited coming into the season, now even more limited uh, against the Chicago Blackhawks. You had pretty much nobody because the injuries, it's not like you could call anybody up at the time and have them show up at the game and put their uniform on. So the Wild call up four players. They send Mike, Mikey Riley down to the AHL. Again, for cap flexibility situations, you have to do it. So, Ole, the goalie, no, Olofsson, the goose. Gustav Olofsson will be the main uh, sixth defenseman at a bare minimum with uh, Kyle Quincy. So, oh, okay. And Kyle Quincy's been 
okay. He's been all right. Of course, luckily, at least all the defense are healthy, and they had a pretty rough ride there in the first two games. A little better against Chicago. That's good. But yeah, so there it is. Uh, Luke Cunning called up initially on Friday the 13th. Luke Cunning was called up. And yeah, he's kind of like a Parisi replacement, though he might be on the wild for a really long time with Charlie Coyle being out. Luke Cunning, even though Coyle's uh, right wing, Cunning's left wing, but well, <laughs> Nina Ryder can play both. He's he's mostly left wing most of the time. So Luke Cunning's going to be here probably a month. Christoph Bersetsky, 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 pardon me, sixth round pick years ago, Landon Ferraro and Zach Mitchell, career minor leaguers, but they've been okay. Uh, Landon Ferraro has played in the NHL here and there with St. Louis and others. So he's had some, you know, fourth line fill-in type of time in the National Hockey League. He's been a very productive AHL player. Zach Mitchell, same thing. He's been okay, and he's been with the uh, Iowa Wild for a little while now. Ferraro was signed in the off season, a lot, and of course, Ber- Bersky was a, was a six round pick. hasn't really panned out as an NHL player as of yet. So at least it's a good thing the Wild focused on the Iowa Wild in the off season, uh, bringing in some well, kind of filling the cupboards a little bit, even though they're not necessarily star players like Kyle Rao, who would be available, but he's hurt too. I mean, doesn't that just isn't that just great? The former Gopher Kyle Rao, one of the better players in that club years ago. Uh, he's not available with injuries, so that figures. Uh, maybe you would have saw Kyle Rao instead of one of the other three. But uh, Luke Cunning, he's going to make his NHL debut already. And that's going to be tonight against Columbus, home opener, unless he's scratched. But I, why would you scratch him? Put him in there. You know, why would you have him as a healthy scratch? Put him in there. Let's see what happens. Even though it's kind of too early. But, eh, okay, maybe it's not too early. Um, I'm excited about it. Very excited about seeing him. It's just the circumstances suck. Um, but uh, again, well, next man up. I mean, what 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 are you gonna do about it, right? Next man up. <laughs> I mean, it's you can. Uh, uh, next thing you know, well, maybe. Well, I mean, I'm sure if anybody gets hurt in the defensive core, you're gonna see uh, Carson Susi called up. That would be probably a good idea. We're gonna check in on Iowa as well. Things very early there. See how far, even if anything, has been going on yet with them. Of course, you open up with a 4-2 loss to Detroit, 5-4 overtime loss to Carolina, thanks to Miko Koivu's last second. Uh, tip-in type of goal there. It was pretty uh, good timing there, thank God. The Detroit game was just, I don't know. I mean, you're playing a team that's, you know, they're in transition. They're they're long removed from their Stanley Cup days. They're now removed from their still surviving, making the postseason days. Um, Now they're kind of in transition, kind of still some veterans hanging around like Zetterberg, and you're trying to make a youth movement, of course, but I mean, with so many lower draft picks, you're not going to pick, you're not going to get a bunch of stars necessarily for a while. Things opened up pretty poorly for the Wild, well, at least in the second period after a solid first period from Devin Dubnik. Two goals allowed within a couple seconds of each other, both in the power play, the Wild getting some penalties and not doing a good job in the penalty kill. That was heartbreaking. Yule Eriksson Ek is the first, and everybody keeps calling him Joel Eriksson Ek, so I, I don't know. I thought it was Yule. I was told it's Yule, and we all were last year, so I'll stick with Yule for now until I hear... Uh, Otherwise, I guess. Yul Eriksson Ek stepping up the third line center for the Minnesota Wild. Marcus Falingo and Chris Stewart, who you're going to hear his name quite a bit here. Is Chris Stewart, four goals in the first couple of games here. Pretty amazing. Um, Yul Eriksson Ek, Chris Stewart. Chris Stewart with two assists in the first game, first game of the season. Pretty crazy. A guy who is fighting for his NHL life in a sense. Not because he's not an NHL player, but because there was talk about, well, maybe. I mean, maybe he won't be on the team because... uh if, if there was enough depth and such, and somebody, you know, one of the younger guys steps up and pushes him away, but, well, it's not going to happen right now. Tyler Ennis, who has not shown a whole lot to me, he did get an assist on the second goal from Chris Stewart, but overall, frustrating game for the Wild. It just seemed like Detroit was better the whole game. It just seemed like they, they just kind of controlled things for the most part. They had the puck almost the whole time. Then again, the Wild did get some good shot attempts, particularly later on. They wound up with 38 uh shots on to Jimmy Howard, but Howard, the better goalie of the two in this one. I mean, and Dubnik, again, the defense was not so good in front of him. You can't really blame him that much, that at the same time, and and again, power play goals. I mean, obviously, you got a man advantage for Detroit, so that's a huge problem. Uh, But again, you hope the penalty kill can stand strong, and it it was unable to at the time, and Granlin injured in this game, and that's it. You got to see him for one game, and uh, well, yeah, that's great. (laughs) That's great. So now we quickly move on to the Carolina Panthers. No, I keep... Why do I keep calling them that? The Carolina Hurricanes. A very winnable game. At least you think you think they are, but the Hurricanes have gotten better, and a lot of people mentioning that. 
Jason Zucker opening up the scoring. He's looking really good as well. He'd been kind of dropping down to the fourth line uh, to fill in in that right wing role, but that's, you know, a rotating situation. But it meant more minutes for Zucker too, because again, I mean, you're going in there with, let's see, you're going in with 11, with 11 forwards, not 12. So it's what it is. I mean, what are you going to do? Thanks a lot, Zach Parisi, right? <laughs> And of course, it's because of the salary cap situation. Otherwise, maybe you'd see Luke Cunning in 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 uh, in there somehow, some way, but not the case at this point. Luke Cunning, of course, yep, boy, very happy to have him on board. Is it Kunin Cunning? I've heard multiple examples of that too. I've got to catch up with that a little bit. Alex Stalak was a net, and he was peppered the whole bleeping night. Again, the defense not so good in front of him. Peppered the whole night, faced forty-two shots, did a great job for a while. And then the, things just started changing, and that was heartbreaking. Um, in that th- in the second period, uh, actually into the third period, the Wild were maintaining a lead. They got up three to one. You thought, okay, we're going to be fine. Uh, both goalies were good for a while there, and then it's like you just start getting past them. I mean, getting past Scott Darling, the former Chicago Blackhawk backup goalie, definitely not as good as. Uh, Alex Daylock in this game, but still, he was better in the shootout, though, unfortunately. At least one goal better. The Wild couldn't do Jack Bleep against Scott Darling in the shootout, but that's kind of another matter, unfortunately. Just an overall frustrating night for the Wild. The Wild nailed with penalties throughout the night as well. That did not help him, and when you're down a man, it's obviously not going to get you anywhere. Five power plays for Carolina, only three for the Wild, and oh well, you know... That's what kind of game it was. Jason Zucker did capitalize on the power play. That's good. But, man, I mean, the Wild giving up power play goals here in the first couple games. And that's, again, that's what it is. Miko Koivu did score on the last second of the game. Thank God. <laughs> he was able to finish on a rebound from Miko Koivu. That was the one thing. Darling was giving up rebounds, and that was very helpful. Chris Stewart capitalizing on his second goal of the season, putting the Wild up 2-1 to one at, the, at the time. And Eric Stahl... When he gets those little breakaways, just a nice little, nice little feed from Zucker. Original, it originated from Coyle, so lucky for him, he was able to get a point. His only point so far, and he's not going to get a point for a long time now. That's depressing when you think about that. Ugh. Uh, but Zucker able to kind of just slide that thing, sail it forward to to Eric Stahl to score against his. He scored his first goal against his former team, and now he's officially scored against every team in the NHL. So good for him there. But it was like. Things would change dramatically after that Carolina started capitalizing, and the Wild just could not get the puck out of the zone, and Alex Stalock, unfortunately, <laughs> was the victim of that. And the shootout, again, did not go well at all for the Wild. Just some weak shots. Koiva went to the patented backhand, and Darling was ready for him. Jacob Slavin would be the only guy to score. It was disappointing, and then Stahl, he just, he just missed. Couldn't even get it on net, and just blah. It was... Frustrating. You hope maybe Eric Stahl would save the day against his former club, but it wasn't meant to be. That's all she wrote there. And the win against Chicago again. Fun. Kind of. I mean, it was low scoring for a long time. It was like, you know, Chicago scores like a bajillion goals in the first two games here, including like an 8-1 to game against Pittsburgh. Who saw that coming? Wow. And then Dubnik keeps him scoreless through two periods. That's pretty damn impressive. I mean, that was great. Uh, it's a good sign for the Wild that they just might win something. Here and unfortunately, things later on would change. Stall would join in. Luckily for the Wild, he would get his uh, second goal of the season very late at the second period. Just able to put one in. Okoye Coyle did get one more assist before he got injured in the third period. So luckily, yeah, if I forgot about that detail. Um, But the Wild, again, I mean, you know, it's... Thank God they're able to get the win in this one, and luckily things would change dramatically. Of course, unfortunately, Ryan Hartman, midway through the second period, you just kind of saw this one coming, and it just figured the Wild would get all these shots on goal, and then the puck would get away, and next thing you know, Chicago would get a little bit of momentum going in their direction, and then wham. I mean, just like one shot on goal there after the Wild had several shots early in that third, midway in the third period, Ryan Hartman, who's been off to a great start. He was a first-run pick in 2013 for the Blackhawks. He's starting to have that breakthrough year, so good for him, but bad for us, I suppose. (sighs) Yeah, here we go. Another one, and it's kind of like next man up as other players get traded away to Columbus and cap hits and all that, and you bring Brandon Saad back, but luckily for the Wild, Evil Otto, not a factor in this one. 
Chris Stewart would get a goal there uh, to make it 2-1, to one, but this was, of course, the turning point of the game in a huge way. Jason Zucker, uh, the Blackhawks swear, no, it was on a wild, no, it was not the power play yet, it'd be the next one. Um, the Blackhawks swear there was offsides on the play, but the referees say the Blackhawks touched the puck, and they had, you know, they were the last ones to touch the puck as it slid past the blue line, and... It slid out of the neutral zone, and Zucker was able to gain possession, zing that thing up to Chris Stewart, who would score on a on a what kind of was a breakaway. The Blackhawks were expecting the whistle. That's the problem. They were kind of just they weren't as prepared for Chris Stewart at the time. Stewart, luckily, smart and a headsy, getting to the net and is able to finish scoring his third goal of the season. Blackhawks would uh, challenge the play. And it was the the call on the ice stood, as they like to say, and yeah, things would cha- <laughs> things would just take a turning point there because then the Blackhawks were charged with a power with a with a penalty because of the challenge, and the Wild would score again right away. It's like it's just kind of go figure for the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. That's just how it goes. Matt Cullen would add his first assist, Mike Riley with his second. So good for him. At least Mikey Riley adding a couple assists before he sent he was temporarily sent down to Iowa. I don't think he'll be there that long. But Riley, I mean, at least he's factoring a little bit in the scoring, and he's been out there on the power play. That's the good part. I'm happy about that, Mike Riley factoring in on the power play. You even see Tyler Ennis a bit out there. You're going to be seeing him a lot more now, especially with the fourth line, what it's going to look like. I mean, you're going to probably see Cullen move up and such. I mean, God only knows exactly what's going to happen, but guys are going to move up with this situation going on. Um, you'll probably see Cullen taking Granlin's spot. That's my guess at the moment. But who knows? Maybe he'll be on the top line. Uh, it could in, anything could happen. We'll get back to that in a second. But again, that was a turning point. And you know, when things don't go your way, they just don't go your way. And that's what happened with the Blackhawks. They would go with the empty net just a few minutes later. Chris Stewart finishing again his fourth goal of the season already. Pretty cool. Ennis and Spurgeon adding assists there. So lucky for Ennis able to get another point, despite he doesn't look that great yet. You know, it, it just looks like he's coasting out there, and I don't and I don't mean it as he's lazy. He just doesn't look. I I don't know. He's probably timid because of the the multiple concussion situation, and he's just yeah. It, it's been a tough go for him. Hopefully, he'll start showing a little bit more of that quickness that he had in the past. Um, Zucker on that power play that was a nice play though. By the way, the old uh, ricochet off the off the pads. You gotta love that uh, from behind the net. <laughs> Koivu would also end an empty, add an empty netter. Chris Stewart giving up on that one because he didn't want you know he didn't want to feel selfish. Wanted to be a nice teammate. Yule Eriksson at Kyle Quincy factoring in on it, but yeah, Koivu ultimately just shooting it from the center line. Second goal of the season. Taves would add a goal late as the Wild would stupidly get a penalty in the last two minutes there. I don't know how. I, I don't know why. Just kind of silly. But Taves had had his third goal of the season, luckily way, way too late. The Blackhawks extremely frustrated because of the non-call on the offsides. Luckily, the Wild come through with that one. Very close, very close play, but uh, the referees and, of course, Toronto saying, no, that was a real goal. It was not offsides. We'll take it. Regardless what it was, as close as it was, we'll take it. And the Wild went 5-2, to two, not 5-1, to one, because Taves was able to add a goal in the last minute to just add a goal in the last minute. Um, I, I won't call it saving face because, I don't know, <laughs> though the Blackhawks suffer their first uh, regulation loss of the season. The Wild won, 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 ultimately, which sounds funny. I mean, I, I considered it 0-2, but okay, the Wild did get a point, so I shouldn't say that. 0-2 uh, before they came into Chicago, but... Wild still at this stage stuck at sixth place in the Central Division. I don't think we'll be stuck there the whole season, but yuck. I'm um, kind of surprised Arizona started out really poorly. Uh, really happy to see the Vegas Golden Knights off to an awesome start. They won their first three. Detroit handed them their first loss ever just yesterday. So um, nice. Nice overall uh, start for the Vegas Knights. Of course, you got Vegas strong and all that going on, and you have Houston strong going for the Houston Astros right now, so maybe both of those clubs will continue their influential runs with what took place. Houston strong because of the uh, hurricane, though, not because of uh, some kind of uh, terror attack of some sorts. It's a uh, you know, just <laughs> a scary situation, obviously, and I'm not laughing at it at all. I'm just kind of, it's a nervous little <laughs> type of thing where you grit your teeth. Uh, so please don't take that the wrong way. Whew, New Jersey's doing well. Washington's, yep. And frickin' St. Louis Blues 4-1. So that, that prediction doesn't look so good just yet. Mm. And the schedule is weird as bleep. We'll talk about that uh, 
in the second segment, the uh, preview segment preview, and of course talking about the uh, the uh, we'll catch up with them with the uh, prospects a little bit as well in segment number two as we always do in a tiny bit of fan interaction because there isn't so much on this show yet. Would like to get that get like to get that larger. Then we'll actually have a separate segment for it one day, like we do with Timberwolves Explosion and Purple Mafia. So uh, otherwise we can sm- smush it all into the second segment. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll pass out the awards first. The first Mike Madonna Award. For this season, he's going to go to Chris Stewart. He's been fantastic. Uh, honorable mention to Jason Zucker. Nice, strong start to the season, and we're going to need those guys in a big way because, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're battered and broken. That's the title of this episode. One injury after another. It's dropping. We're dropping like flies in the first week and a half of the season, two, first week, two weeks or so of the season. It's a bleeping joke. So there it is. Uh, it was the first week. Jeez. Can't, I can't believe it, but hey, you know, next man up, it's an opportunity for some of these guys. Some of them, they're just fill-ins, but still, hey, it's a nice paycheck for the Landon Ferraros and Christoph Burchies. Maybe they will get a, and Zach Mitchell, maybe they will get a shot. And of course, time to get your feet wet, Luke Cunning, former Wisconsin Badger, of course, and a first-round pick for the Wild in 2016. Mike Madonna Award to Chris Stewart, honorable mention to Las Vegas native Jason Zucker. We've heard about that a million times, but hey, it's important with what took place recently, and of course the Vegas Knights as well, Golden Knights. Uh, the James Shepard Memorial, I'm just going to k- give it to the uh, injuries at this stage. You know, I, you know, it, it's been such a rough go. I'm not even going to be mad at anybody right now, just mad at the situation with the injuries and I guess even the salary cap situation as well. It's frustrating, but um, that's where I'm going to stand right now. Um, so we'll take a quick break, come back for segment number two. We are back here on Brave the Wild, segment number two. Time to do some previews. We're going to preview two games, which, well, one is tonight, and the next one is next Friday against the Winnipeg Jets. Kind of a so goofy start to the schedule once again. And then you have back-to-backs later. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they're doing this other than they I, I just don't know why. That's all. Uh, <laughs> we'll check in on the prospects and, of course, see if there's any fan interaction to talk about as well in this segment. So let's hop on board to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Sergei Bravrovsky leading the way in the net. 3-0 and for him so far this year. Less than one goal a game. He's already got one shutout. Yikes. Scary. Um, I'd much rather go against uh, Junis Corpasolo. That would be great, but uh, it's probably not going to happen. Sergei Bravrovsky and Columbus off to a good start again. I was kind of afraid they might drop off this year, but there they are. They're leading the way over there in the Metropolitan Division. They have a game in hand versus Washington. Washington has one more point, but again, the game in hand thing, we all like to talk about that here in Minnesota because we're going to catch up, you know, right? We're going to catch up because we played less games than the Blackhawks or than the than the, than the the National Predators or God knows who. Cam Atkinson off to a quiet start. That sucks for my fantasy hockey team there. Uh, only one goal for him, but again, always ever dangerous, and he was a huge problem for the Wild last season, particularly in that doggone Mickey frickin' Noor, uh, uh New Year's Eve evening. And Artemi Panarin, are you surprised he's leading that team in scoring after getting traded back from the Blackhawks? Yeah, in the uh, <laughs> the evil Otto Brandon Saad deal. Well, he has four points for him, one goal, three assists. Sonny, Sonny Milano with four goals, and that's it. But still, four goals for him. He's doing well. This is a game, well, obviously it's huge for the Wild tonight. It's, a, it's the home opener. We're not uh, opening a renovated building or anything. Maybe small renovations, little fixes here and there, which ever, which happens every year in every building. I got to think little fixes here and there, uh, maintenance and all that. But um, mm. and Zach Delp is on the club, so good for him. He was traded there for the, from the Wild last season for like a player to be named later, if I remember correctly. It was something like that or cash considerations. But Zach Delp making the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, good for him. Three games so far, nothing going in that major category other than, well, nine penalty minutes, I suppose. So making his name known in that department, Zach Dulp, Zach Dulp. Congratulations to him. The Wild, uh, well, let's get this one. Though, you're gonna, yeah, you're going to see Luke Cunning tonight. It'll be fun to watch in that sense. So that's something to look forward to other than you're going to see some minor leaguers playing. You're going to see Ferraro, Bursky, and Zach Mitchell out there. That's going to be fun, I guess. 
it's on the Wild defenseman to step up and uh, do a good job against this tough, tough club. But again, even tougher is going to be to score. And when you're missing so many guys, you're missing Niederreiter, Coyle. It's like even as inconsistent as Coyle could be, his still his value is still really high. No Granlund, I mean, no Parisi. It's just ridiculous. The uh, the odds of the Wild winning this game are extremely low. But it's hockey, you know. Things can change very dramatically, like how the Wild crushed the Blackhawks the other night. So just one little thing going against the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Just one little bounce of the puck. Who knows? That's the hope, but right now, I think the Blue Jackets are going to win the game. I mean, and that's not trying to be negative, not trying to be this or that. It's the odds favor that. I'm just giving you an honest <laughs> an honest uh, analysis coming in. I'd love to see the momentum. It's our little homecoming, I guess, type of game, in, in a sense. So, hopefully, maybe Luke Cunning scores right away. And that tends to happen a lot, where it's a top prospect at his first game. There's so much energy, so much uh, adrenaline. They score in their first game. I do expect Luke Cunning to score tonight. How about that? Uh, most likely got to score is Luke Cunning for the Wild. And maybe he's not the most likely, but I am going to pick it anyway. Um, I do pick a 3-2 to two loss to the Columbus Blue Jackets tonight. Unfortunately, I think Dubnik will be strong in that. It won't be Staylock. You're going to see Dubnik uh, in that. Boy, he's going to get a lot of rest in between now and the next game. It's just stupid. I, I, I hate all this time off. I mean, damn it, I want to watch hockey. Don't you want to watch I mean, I, you know, they don't have to be back-to-backs because that's always tough, but hopefully maybe now we have a reliable backup goalie in Alex Stalock because, of course, he did win the job, for now anyway, at a bare minimum, and he did a good job against Carolina until the damn shootout because their goalie's bigger than our goalie, and that's a problem sometimes. Uh, of course, mobility's number one, but uh, when you can't even get around the guy, you're kind of screwed, and that's what happened in the shootouts. Uh, but, uh, yes, the Columbus Blue Jackets will win 3-2, and if somebody scores, I hope it's Cam Atkinson, I guess. I'd prefer a shutout against Columbus. I'd prefer, like, I prefer a 4 nothing shutout. Cunning gets two goals, and then maybe you see uh, Stahl add another, or, or Zucker, the way he's going, or freaking Stewart might score two more. But, uh, yeah, Luke Cunning, 4 nothing wild. That'd be great. But, hey, if the Columbus Blue Jackets score one goal, I hope it's Cam Atkinson. That would be helpful to the fantasy team, I guess, and that's it. <laughs> Up-and-coming team still to this point, and of course a coach with a shelf life. We all know who he is, Mr. Thor- Mr. John Tortella, uh, Torella, who likes to get in a Tortella, who likes to get into big fights with the media on a regular basis. Likes to curse people out all the time. He's calmed down a little bit, but I don't know. We'll just have to see if that's really a real, a real or, or false. At the end of the day, the Winnipeg Jets. You know, I almost get these clubs mixed up because they look so similar. Like the uniforms are like the same color and all that. I don't know, but eh. Columbus has definitely turned out to be the better team. A lot of us were afraid Winnipeg would be a big threat. Yeah, next Friday. Next Friday. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Connor Hellebuck, Hellebuck, who's in and out. He's off to an okay start to the season, keeping the goals against average. About league average, I'd say 2.59. Can't count on Steve Mason thus far. He's gotten just smoked uh, 11 goals against so far in only two games. That's not good. And, of course, he was pulled, so, yeah. Got, got his goals against even uh, even higher. Um, yeah, you got you got Blake Wheeler still leading the way. Patrick Lane, who's one of the better players out there. Brian Little, all these good players. Of course, Dustin Bufflin. We'd love to have him. He caught a big fish. We'd like to catch a big fish and bring Dustin Bufflin to the wild. Wouldn't that be nice? But I don't know. Zero um, <laughs> three start to the season with Calgary and Toronto. The Canadian clubs whooping some butt, and it's been all Canada for the Winnipeg Jets, and they've had to start four games on the on the road. Uh, for a four to one clip there, though they will be playing at home. Uh, they'll be the Wild will be closing out a three game home stand for the Winnipeg Jets. They'll play Carolina and Columbus between now and then. So similar teams there, Columbus and Minnesota, showing up in the schedule. They lose to Calgary twice on the road. Tough start. Um, yeah, seven to six, <laughs> seven goals, six goals one night there, and then they beat Edmonton and Vancouver. Impressive wins there, uh, particularly the one over Edmonton anyway on the road. Five to two win for. Uh, Winnipeg Jets, so, okay. Hopefully they don't bring that momentum to the game against the Minnesota Wild here, as they're our northern neighbor. They're not that far away, we all know that. Uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. (sighs) Winnable game for the Wild. They always play well against the Jets. Tend to play better here than there, though. That's my fear. Um, I'm going to step out in good faith, because I don't want to pick an 0-2 week here. The Wild will beat the Winnipeg Jets. I I, I have a good feeling the Wild will score a good number of goals, especially with the time off. It'll be similar to Chicago in terms of a uh, little bit of scoring momentum, though, again, the Chicago situation was unique because uh, they were thrown off a bit. But, hey, we'll 
even things out here with the fact that Winnipeg is not nearly as good as the Blackhawks yet anyway. <laughs> At least I don't think so. I'd be quite surprised. Wild will win 4-2 to two over the Jets. Most likely guy to scoring that one is, well, gosh, I don't even remember who's left anymore. Uh, Yule Erickson, that I guess. No, I, I, who's left? I, that's what throws me out of loop here. Who, who's going to be on the top line? Who's going to be here and there? Uh, safe to say Eric Stahl will be on the top line. Koivu will be on the, you know, it's the second line because that's how it goes. There's the centers. They're leading the way. You're not going to put those guys together. That'd be kind of weird and silly. Um, geez, we'll talk about the lines here in a second, but um, most likely got to score against Winnipeg. I guess Eric Stahl, I might as well go with that. Or Jared Spurgeon. Jared Spurgeon, let's have some fun. He tends to do well when we go north of the border. And uh, that's good. To, that's that's good for me. So, 4-2 victory for the Wild. I, I feel a little momentum after the long break. And hopefully the Wild can do that. Particularly, they'll be pissed off and motivated, i got to think. And maybe you'll see uh, one of the minor leaguers factor in. I'm, I'm sure they will factor in one of the four goals. And that's my guess coming into things. Uh, Zach Mitchell or Bertie will add a goal in there. Maybe even Ferraro. Who knows? It'll be, it'll be one of the three. So, yeah, frustrating start to the season, particularly with the injuries. You didn't like the way things started with Detroit either, but it's just a bad omen right out of the gate. Freaking Paris, you can't even get on the ice right out of the season. It's just like, enough already with this. Ugh. And then Granlin gets hurt right away. It's just figures. Just You're just sitting and rotting. Lower body injury, sitting and rotting with more and more injuries. Oh, yeah. So that's the case there. <clears throat> Let's look around a tiny, tiny bit. Obviously, Luke Cunning's on the wild now. Dimitri Sokolov. Let's check on Dimitri, how he's doing. He's back with the Sudbury Wolves, which I don't understand at all. Five goals, five assists in eight games. Why isn't he with the Iowa Wild? Why is he back with the juniors? What's the point? You know, that's three years now with Sudbury. Come on, man. Hopefully, the Wild will bring him to Iowa at some point soon. And, yes, he's only 19, so he was with Sudbury when he was, like, 17 years old. So maybe I can't complain too much. He's real young and still developing, but at least he's in North America, thank God. That's that's a good thing. He's in the Ontario Hockey League, of course. Ten points, five goals, five assists. So I get, like, 60 goals there. That's why I ask again, what's the point? Uh, another guy who's in juniors with the Erie Otters. I love that name, the Erie Otters. Isn't that cool? Nine points in nine games. Five goals, four assists for the third-round pick, even Ladonia, picked by the Wild, of course, out of Novi, Michigan. Youngster, in a big way, just turned 18 years old at the end of August. Got a his whole life ahead of him. Small guy. The Wild went with some small skill guys. Maybe Tyler Ennis type players. Hopefully if they pan out in a good way without the concussions. But nice little start to the season I suppose in, in Erie. I expect a 40 goal season for him from him after a 24 goal season last year. Maybe I'm overdoing it. Maybe 35. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> checking in some of the other notables. We'll say Jack Sadek mostly because he's on the go for his 7th round pick years ago. 3 games. Nothing yet. Factoring in the penalties, but and at least he's a plus two for a team that's not been playing that well to start off the season. That's unfortunate. He's already a junior, and he's got, what, 16 career points so far. Career points, by the, by the way. He had a little surge at the end of the season last year to get him to 11. Him being Jack Sadick of the Golden Gophers out of Lakeville, Minnesota. Jordan Greenway, not a whole lot going on yet either. But again, you know, their, their season is just getting started in the hockey. It's just like the Big Ten's Gophers. One goal and one assist. Actually, not that bad for the uh, the ju- He's also a junior, Jordan Greenway of Boston University. One goal, one assist so far for them. Look at, for him anyway. Looking forward to what he can do as we progress. Luis Belpidio, Belpidio, Miami University of Ohio. He's a senior. Two games so far, so at least he's healthy, or so I'd like to believe. Nothing going in the scoring, nothing going in anything else either. Just even. He's not plus. He's not minus. Just kind of letting that thing go as is. Susie so far is on Iowa. And we'll look at Iowa right about now. Two points. One goal, one assist so far. Good start for him. He's already equaled the amount of games he played with Iowa last year. Remember, only three games. Limited action. He's seeing a lot more action with Iowa now. And he's making a name for himself so far. 23 years old for the big beast. Six foot four. Carson Susie, former Duluth Bulldogs. Unfortunately, could not bring in the national championship last year. Nick Sealer, one assist so far. The former Gopher, again, Justin Kloos, the former Gopher, signed at the end of the year last year after the Gophers were eliminated right out of the gate from the NCAA tournament, much to my chagrin. He's got an assist. That's nice. Ryan Malone got aggressive, got kicked out of the game <laughs> in a big old fight. 
and hasn't factored in the scoring so far. The guy's only, what is he, six months? Five months younger than me. That's how old he is. <laughs> Mario Lucia hasn't factored in the scoring. Christoph Bursi, same old story. Seems like he never scores. And that's unfortunate. I would like to see him factor. So far, it's been uh, career minor leaguers leading the way. Cone in two games, one goal, one assist. So he's got he had a point a game coming in. Good for him before getting called up to Minnesota. That's a good deal. Uh, Pat Canone, of course, a valuable career minor leaguer who's been fantastic in the AHL, but hasn't really uh, finally got his first crack of the NHL last year. And unfortunately, it was short-lived because it's just how it goes. Uh, Chase Lang is up with the Minnesota Wild at the moment rather than with the uh, Rapid City Rush. That's what they're called now. <laughs> Colton Beck has been factoring in the scoring. He was another one of those career minor leaguers along the way, at least at this point. So far, Nicholas Svedberg has been the goalie in all three games. Nothing for uh, Mr. M- Michaelik so far, so unfortunate for him. But Svedberg's been all right. 2.74 goals against average, 1-2 and two on the season. Iowa uh, losing two games. So the same record as the Wild in a sense, uh, but uh, did not get a shootout loss like the Wild. So the Wild have one point better than the Minnesota Wild, the Iowa Wild at this stage. So kind of is what it is there. Rapid City Rush have only played one game so far, and they lost 8-3. to three. Ouch. <laughs> only Pavel Jennings, like a, a former draft pick with the Wild on that current roster. But we'll see. People get sent down, sent up, sent down. Like Chase Lang, you know, he's kind of been an off-injured guy in the system. Unfortunately, he's only played one game with Iowa. He's been up and down with Iowa and um, over to, at the time, the Quad City Mallers. Now it's the Rapid City Rush. Came from the CHL to the uh, ECHL a couple years ago, and now they're the Minnesota Wilds uh, uh, AA affiliate at this stage. So yeah, that's where things stand with the prospects, at least for the most part, at, at, at this point, I'm trying to see if there's any other major notables. You don't want to go back too far. Maybe Lewis Nanny a little bit. Uh, nothing going right now, so he, his, the season hasn't started, um, unfortunately. Uh, so that's kind of how things are right now. We'll, we'll talk about other players later on. We'll let the season kind of catch up here, like Rapid City, some of the other Euros and such. We'll let things catch up before we get too, you know, too excited checking in on everybody here. Uh, but pretty much where things are. So I'm going to talk a bit about the social media. It's at Brave the Wild, at Brave the Wild. This information, again, everything will be in the show description at the end of the day, but at Brave the Wild. Just want to thank a uh, quick shout out to Hockey Podcasts, who often retweets the show. Thank you again very much. Hockey Podcasts, uh, give them a follow, and uh, you can check out other Hockey Podcasts on, on there as well. It's now Teal Town. I kept calling it Pucknology. That's still their Twitter, but it's Teal Town, San Jose Sharks show out there. Uh, my buddy Chris got in touch with me. I believe it could have been from Hockey Podcast. You saw it in their, their thread with the retweets. And I want to thank Hockey Podcast for, uh, you know, hey, you can get to meet other other shows out there. It's pretty cool. Uh, I, I like the Fireside Chat as well. That's the uh, Calgary Flames. That's my second favorite team. So Calgary Flames uh, <laughs> podcast out there as well. Um, I've, I've noticed that Flames... That, that people that listen to Flames shows listen to this one as, as well. It was, it was particularly back when they were in our division. I think that might have had something to do with it, but I don't know. I've just always liked that team. Maybe they like me too. I, I don't know. Uh, so, check things out here. See if there's any comments. Not a whole lot. Nope. Somebody shared. I really appreciate that. Some shared after the, uh, the uh, season review. Hope you guys liked it, and if you haven't uh, checked it out yet, please do soon. Uh, I posted a link to Winnick getting a contract for this season with the Wild. He didn't uh, leave for more money. <laughs> Sebastian says off to Iowa, and it's like no, no. He, he's he's a he's an NHL or he's a he's a bottom six guy, but he's on the puck all the time. I mean, he's fantastic. He's unusually good at defense. So you you want a guy like that on your roster? It's not going to hurt you. Luke Cunning was called up, and that was good. The injuries mounting. Charlie Quayle out six to eight weeks. Travis Finch says, well, that's not good. Kurt Back says, see, always a price for happiness and good fortune. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Chris Porter, one of the Hall of Famers for Brave the Wild for many years, all the way back to the beginning, out of uh, Idaho, says, dang. And of course, he's a Pittsburgh Penguins fan first and San Jose Sharks fan second, Chris Porter. So you had a Stanley Cup Finals with Chris Porter. That's why I called it the Porter Cup Final, you know, to give him a major shout out on that show for his loyalty and uh, friendship over the many years now, um, particularly to this show, but others. 
So that's where things stand at this point. There were no visitor posts. Please do join it if you could. Facebook.com forward slash Brave the Wild. Facebook.com forward slash Brave the Wild. And I got to give a major shout out to <laughs> MNW Players. MNW Players, that is also on Facebook. Look that up. Give that a like and follow. Please do indeed. Also, their website, their main website as well, is uh, MNWplayers.com. They cover everything. Pavel Bunyet and Merrick Skyba. Uh, just big, big hockey fans out there in the Czech Republic. I want to thank you guys so much for being a part of things and having me on board as an admin on MNW Players. That's also, again, a Facebook page. Give that a like or follow. Merrick Skyba and Pavel Bunyet. Thank you again um, for everything. You guys, they cover everything. You know, they, they liked me. We first got in touch because uh, my brother-in-law, Chance Kostick, who is a major, major member of the Minnesota Wild Hardcore, along with Jim Maddiel, Sarah Maddiel, and others, uh, many others out there, um, <clears throat> they referred me to Pavel Bunyet of MNW Players because I often talk about the prospects uh, on this show, particularly, well, obviously, in the second segment. So, I mean, they cover everything from the Euro Leagues to, uh, to, you know, Minnesota Wild related, of course, all draft picks. It's all about the Minnesota Wild players from Pavel Jennies, Pavel Jennies on the, on the Rabbit City Rush all the way up to Zach Parisi, Ryan Suter, you know, you get the idea. They cover everything. Europe, uh, AHL, ECHL, NHL, uh, college hockey, all the above, and they keep in touch with all of them, like Sam Warning and such. Now Sam Warning no longer with the uh, the, the uh, Wild. I was hoping he was going to come over to the Rapid City Rush, and he's not there. So that sucks. Maybe he's still with Quad City. That stinks. I want Sam Warning, damn it. He was one of their best players, and uh, he former Gopher, and uh, damn it. So no uh, Sam Warning. Frick, that stinks. So, yeah, pardon my French there. i got to cut that out a little bit. Um, <clears throat> thanks again, Pavel and Merrick and all of you. Please tell your friends about the show if you could, and, the, and it would be greatly appreciated. Please write a positive rating for Brave the Wild on iTunes and or Stitcher if you could. It would be greatly appreciated. I'll give you a huge shout-out on the show and a big thank you. And, yeah, just that would be wonderful. Uh, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, I guess, how's the play when it comes to the injuries? I, I know I need to quit saying that. You just hope that uh, that's it for now. No more injuries. Speedy recovery, all that, or just kind of it is what it is. You, you're going to be waiting, you know, three weeks minimum for Nito Niederreiter, six weeks minimum for Charlie Coyle. Granlin is like week to week. Parisi is God knows. He might be back tomorrow. He might be back in, in a month. It's Sam Bradford syndrome, if you get the idea with the Minnesota Vikings. So, oh, Zach, please come back and get ready. He, he might even play tonight. Who knows? Though I doubt it. Highly doubt it. Granlin will not play tonight, though. Uh, it's going to be a, it's going to, it's like a week to week thing. So we're just going to have to wait and see, hope for the best, and we'll talk to you next week. Hopefully uh, things change dramatically in a positive direction.